It's a classic military operation. Attack the enemy with overwhelming force. We're in the eye wall. Cut off his ability to communicate. Take the enemy's eyes out. Take his ears out. Then fix him so you can't maneuver. This whole place is going underwater. But this is no sneak attack. The aggressor announces her intentions. Experts predict the date, the time, even the place where she will strike. And yet somehow, a natural disaster spirals into an unnatural human catastrophe. We're devastated. We haven't eaten in three days. What turns Katrina into one of the deadliest hurricanes of modern times? No water, no food. We don't have a home. We lost everything. We lost everything. <laughs> Why does it take so long to respond to the cries for help? Who makes the decisions and why? People got to do something. You got to move food. We got babies out here. We got handicapped people. Two sons. Two On the floor. Those. She's My dying right man. now. Two people died already. Where's the people? Where's the mail? Please, somebody. We need some help out here. Get out of here. We want to get out of here. I don't even know if my kids are alive, man. The facts behind the storm shed new light as we go inside Hurricane Katrina. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, July 2004. A war game is underway at the state's emergency operations center. The scenario, a deadly hurricane called Pam ravages New Orleans and the surrounding area. Floodwaters surge over the levees engulfing the city. The death toll, 61,000. The injured and sick, 380,000. The homeless, half a million. Half a million buildings destroyed. One million people evacuate the hurricane zone. In the war game, Pam cripples local and state government. So without even waiting for an SOS, Washington takes charge of the relief effort. After a week of these doomsday scenarios, the disaster officials have a preliminary plan. So the locals knew what their responsibilities were. The state knew what its responsibilities were. The federal government knew what its responsibilities were. Wednesday, August 24th, 2005, 11 a.m., the central Bahamas. Heavy rain and high winds rattle the skies and kick up mountainous waves in the Atlantic Ocean. Satellite photography reveals a spinning formation of thunderstorms with the signature counterclockwise rotation of a hurricane in the making. Sustained wind speed tops 38 miles an hour. It is officially a tropical storm for now. On the alphabetized list of names for storms in the Atlantic Ocean in 2005, the next one up is Katrina. Miami. The National Hurricane Center issues an advisory. Hurricane conditions are possible in South Florida within 36 hours. Bentonville, Arkansas. An emergency response team here is already on the case. Hurricanes are one of the few disasters that give you lead time, that you can really kind of plan things ahead of time. And for us, it's go, 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 go until the hit storm hits. This response team is using that lead time to gather truckloads of supplies that people need in an emergency including bottled water, flashlights, and Pop-Tarts. But Jason Jackson is not part of a government disaster plan. He works for Walmart. Thursday, August 25th, 3.30 p.m. Katrina's wind speed hits 74 miles an hour. 
That means she's now a Category 1 hurricane, able to topple trees, down power lines, and damage homes. At the high end of the scale, a Cat 5, with winds above 155 miles an hour, can decimate entire communities, killing anyone in its path. Six thirty p.m. Hurricane Katrina comes ashore. She pummels the coast of Florida and heads inland. She leaves fourteen people dead and causes four hundred sixty million dollars in damages. For a Cat One, she packs a serious punch. The reason? Katrina's swirling winds are high, but she moves over the state slowly at only eight miles per hour. An average hurricane usually moves at about 15 to 20 miles per hour uh, with, with its forward speed. So it basically hung over Florida for an extended period of time, exposing them to relatively weak but hurricane force winds nevertheless. Katrina's foray into South Florida has cost her energy. Hurricanes typically lose strength over land. That's because they draw their power from warm water, like an engine burning fuel. Once she's out over the warm Gulf of Mexico, Katrina re-energizes. The conditions were very ripe because the sea surface temperatures were over 80 degrees, which is the minimum you need for, for the formation of hurricanes. Friday, August 26, 11.30 a.m. Katrina strengthens. She's now a Category 2 hurricane and could become a 3 within the next 24 hours. Her next target, anywhere from the Florida Panhandle to Louisiana. Along the Gulf Coast, the Red Cross and Salvation Army are on the move. They open shelters and mobile feeding units. So before the storm hits, we're, we're moving people and we're also moving our supplies. We, we pre-position our supplies in, in warehouses uh, around the Gulf Coast. The news about Katrina is spreading, but who's paying attention? Have you ever been to New Orleans? It's the hottest city. New Orleans, Louisiana. A uniquely American city. A rollicking mix of French, Spanish, Creole, Cajun, and African influences. A place with its own beat. A city of a half a million people spiced with jazz, voodoo, and gumbo. Drop you off in New Orleans, man. The good times roll on the very fragile soil of the Mississippi Delta. This major port city is built almost entirely below sea level. It's shaped like a crescent and surrounded by water. The Gulf of Mexico 100 miles to the south, Lake Pontchartrain to the north, and the Mississippi River winds through it. On average, the city streets are six feet lower than the Gulf. It's protected by one of the world's largest systems of earthen levees and flood walls. But some of the levees are slowly sinking and in need of repair. On Friday at 5 p.m., Katrina is northwest of the Florida Keys. With every passing hour, she sucks in energy from the warm water. She's projected to grow into a very dangerous Category 3 hurricane with winds up to 130 miles per hour. Katrina now appears to have settled on a target west of the Florida Panhandle. She is fast becoming a monster. From Washington, D.C. to Louisiana, local, state, and federal officials know Katrina is coming. We're dealing with uh, Hurricane Katrina. Baton Rouge. Here at the Louisiana Emergency Operations Center, officials are in battle mode. Several times a day, they strategize on the phone with emergency planners around the state, the ones who will be on the front lines if disaster strikes. One local official recorded these calls and provided them to the producers of this documentary. They reveal what officials say to each other and how they plan up to the very moment that Katrina strikes. would like to point out or, or let you know, too, that the governor is monitoring the call. When I go to state police, 
Well, there are no road closures at this time. Uh, we've prepared uh, all of our our assets for deployment and uh, placed all our personnel on standby. For this hurricane, as with every natural disaster in the U.S., local and state officials are the primary and most critical line of defense. Shelter Task Force, any reports at this time? Uh, no report, we're just in the alert phase. The Red Cross is opening a forward operations office tomorrow morning here in Baton Rouge to begin to stage resources from other states coming in that would be available to support Louisiana and our neighboring states in the case of the uh, storm coming in. Everything starts from the bottom up, and there's an old saying, all disasters are local. Even before a hurricane hits or flood waters rise, the states will often ask the federal government to get involved. That's where FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, comes in. FEMA is supposed to strategize with the state and come up with a plan of attack. The state kind of acts as the broker, coordinating what the local needs are and giving us a, a picture of what the, the gross needs are, so to speak. Also on this Friday, August 26th, both Mississippi and Louisiana declare states of emergency, which give the governors the right to deploy National Guard troops and suspend civil liberties. The U.S. Coast Guard puts helicopters, planes, and cutters on standby. Out in the Gulf, oil companies evacuate their rigs. The work stoppage will have an immediate impact nationwide. The Gulf accounts for more than 25% of America's oil and natural gas production. New Orleans is by far the biggest city in the likely path of Katrina. She's now expected to hit the Gulf Coast in 72 hours. Over the coming days, two Louisiana politicians will play leading roles in determining the city's fate. 49-year-old Ray Nagin is a former cable TV executive elected as mayor in 2002. 62-year-old Kathleen Blanco is a veteran of state politics and the first woman to serve as Louisiana governor. It's Friday night in the French Quarter. On Bourbon Street, the étouffée flies out of the kitchens and the freewheeling jazz bands are moving feet. People down here, they don't fear hurricanes. They honor them. Big Easy style with a mind-numbing concoction called a hurricane. 11 p.m. Friday night. The National Hurricane Center forecasts that Katrina will hit land here in the town of Burris, Louisiana, 60 miles southeast of New Orleans. This prediction will turn out to be extraordinarily accurate. Saturday, August 27, 2005. Katrina is now a deadly Category 3 hurricane. Her winds hit 115 miles an hour. She draws awesome power from the Gulf and propels a storm surge ahead of her. 7.30 a.m. Baton Rouge. A Louisiana emergency official, Jeff Smith, has gathered his counterparts for another conference call. FEMA, FEMA Region 6, do you have any comments? The FEMA liaison wants Louisiana officials to make a key decision about relief supplies. We need to start flowing commodities uh, to supplement 